Right, let's look at the uh, prelim uh, paper one now uh, question one right uh, if you go to the question um the question paper question one was uh, retained income not in statement of financial position right uh, going through the question always advise just read everything in the question retained income in a statement of financial position Right, uh, it's 55 marks. Yes, but in the complete in 45 minutes. Then Tati Limited. Tati Limited supplies and installs different types of solar panels at a fixed uh, price. You are provided with information for the financial year ending 30 June 2023. Then refer to information B1. I have a question 1.1 to calculate the value of the closing stock which is five marks use information b2 and b3 to calculate the missing figures right denoted by uh, one two three uh, and that's a fixed asset note not number three then uh, complete the retained income note right note number seven not number eight not seven then i uh, complete the statement of financial position because seven is a um, shareholders capital ordinary share capital right and then complete the statement of financial position that is the balance sheet and that's 28 marks that's where most of your marks are all right but if you do everything else uh, properly you know the 28 marks will be easy to get all right information a balance in 2030 june with ordinary share capital i have uh, retained income loan a uh, shiloh bank then fixed assets at carrying value and uh, there's a question mark uh, fixed deposit bnb bank 582,000 inventory question mark uh, you have to calculate inventory remember in 1.1 then um net trade debtors bank uh, favorable question mark that means you have to calculate at some point deposit water and electricity right that's a prepayment then SARS income tax, right, there will be an, uh, an adjustment to this on provisional payments. That, uh, that means payments that are done during the year, not the actual uh, calculated SARS or tax, income tax, right. That will cover when you're doing the uh, company account ledger accounts, company ledger accounts. Then our trade creditors, then shareholders for dividends. Normally, the shareholders for dividends, it's... Uh, the final dividend uh, in the year then rent expense and uh, that means uh you're renting out a proper then director fees you see there will be adjustments relating to this that's why they include them here then uh you have uh, additional information such limited sales the solar panels at a standard rate of 10,500 per unit a mark of 25 percent on course is applied this specific identification method uh, this is one of the methods that you use for uh, valuing stock, uh, closing stock or valuing stock. Right, um, there is the other one is first in, first out, which is the fee for. Then there is uh, the weighted average uh, method. So there are three of them. So here the company is said to be using uh, the specific identification method. Then uh, the information relating to the solar panels as follows, right? Opening number of units is 78 on 1 July. At the year is ending 30 June 2023. That means the first day of the year was 1 July 2022. Then purchase during the year. Then we have a closing number of units during the year or not given. Then our units are sold uh, 602. Then note number three, we have carrying value at the beginning. These are opening balance, cost price, opening balance, accumulated depreciation opening balance then we have additional movements additions at cost only vehicles of equipment sold for 55,000 then disposal well, that means there was a vehicle that was disposed of then depreciation for the year we need to calculate depreciation that's one of the uh, question 1.2 you need to calculate uh, then closing entries closing cost price at 30 June, right, were given. Then uh, details of fixed assets. Lane and, and Building, the company 
also owns property but are not given anything relating to property that means there will be some balancing and everything that needs to be done equipment was purchased on that one at december 2023 so that means there was equipment see this 55,000. this 55,000 right here yeah it was purchased on 31 december uh, 2022 during uh, the financial year then when it comes to depreciation only depreciate for the time that has been in use right to we'll do that then the transaction has been correctly recorded right so yeah they're telling you if the question is silent about whether the transition was recorded or not right the assumption is always it was recorded but if the question says the transition was not recorded that means they will need to give you uh, the figures that will allow you to calculate whatever is needed especially here you can easily calculate because you already are given uh, the figures okay all right then um Depreciation is calculated at 10% uh, per annum on cost. So straight line method, which is pretty simple and straightforward. A vehicle was sold, uh, and now we're going to vehicle. A vehicle was sold for cash on 31 March 2023. That means the vehicle was sold, uh, you know, to, during the financial year. Right, so if a an asset a fixed asset is sold during the financial you calculate depreciation at, up to date of sale in order for you to calculate the carrying value on date of sale right um believe in the question will be able to do that it was recorded correctly as well so uh this uh, this this transaction of selling the vehicle was recorded correctly that means the cost price of the vehicle was removed from the from the books I did a complete depression of the vehicle that also was removed from the book books right so everything about the vehicle was dealt with uh, correctly the details of this disposal of the vehicle uh, according to the fixed asset register is as follows right uh, cost price there's a question mark a climate depreciation that is opening it's 66,000 then depression rate is 20 percent on reducing balance method or diminishing balance method uh, profit on sale of vehicle that's 3350 that means the vehicle was sold uh, above the carrying value and that's how you calculate that's how you come up with a profit on sale then depression on all vehicles was accurately calculated at 98,890 for the financial year then a creditor as credit balance of 1500 in the creditor's ledger must be transferred uh must be transferred must still be transferred to his account in the debtor's uh, ledger right we'll do this one as well right uh, then a storeroom was rented out on 1 october like um then for eleven thousand two hundred per month rent increased by seven point five percent right on one april provide uh, for the outstanding rent that means there's rent expense that means they owe rent for i don't know how long we'll see then uh shiloh loan bank loan the loan setting from shiloh bank reviewed the following right uh, total prepayments total repayments right including interest 225,400 interest capitalized 83,160 closing balance it's a question mark as well then 20 percent of the loan will be settled during the next financial year so there will be an adjustment normally uh, with this particular adjustment they always ask you to calculate the interest capitalized but it's different you are calculating the balance at the end just have to be careful read the question correctly the company has three directors who earn the same fee one director uh, was paid three two months in advance so there will be an adjustment so here basically uh, if you look at this one it's a prepayment as well right so that's uh, an amount paid in advance so that will be part of the trade and other receivables then dividends share capital and dividends authorized share capital 300,000 that means basically they're authorized to, to issue up to 3 million sorry ordinary shares then on 1 july 2022 
uh, shares in issue were 1,500,000. .5 then on 31 December 2022, right, a dividend was uh, declared, right, in term dividend was declared of 12 cents per share and was declared and paid, it's not owing. Then on 1 March, right, uh, shares were repurchased right, at 150 and the average price of the share was calculated at what 135 that means there will be um, a set off with the retained income to cater for the premium that was uh, repurchased that the shares were repurchased uh, at then 30 june a final dividend was declared right not no additional shares right were issued during uh, the year then income tax for 2023 income tax uh, for the financial year uh, was accurately calculated at 309 and is 30% of net profit then a uh, financial indicator after taking into account um, all adjustment the current ratio was currently calculated uh, 1.2 is to 1 current ratio basically it's current assets is to current liabilities if you don't know what current ratio is that means uh, you will be lost right okay going to our question right going to our question and, and, and our answer um, the first one that, that we need to answer is uh, pertaining the stock right right uh, so they said calculate uh, the what the value of stock so if you come to to this one right we need to calculate first how much our uh, stock was uh, our units were available so the number of units are uh, opening 731 purchase is 631 so that will give you as uh, 78 plus 631 minus 602 right 78 minus 601 plus 631 minus 602 right this will give you <coughs> I believe it's 107 at right, this 107 I'm going to say 107 multiplied by because uh, remember the question says here uh, they were sold at 10,500 per unit and that includes a markup of 25% so if you want to calculate the cost right, what we do is markup is already 125 percent so on top of the hundred so that would be 100 divided by 125 times 10,500 right so uh, to calculate that quickly get a calculator that will be a hundred divided by 125 uh, times 10,500 get 8400 multiplied by 107 898 800 right uh, then calculate the depression on vehicles right accumulate depression on vehicles um, it's a straightforward uh, question if you look at this one Right, uh, it's 519 minus 814. That's the accumulated depreciation in vehicles. And I think the question is specific. Calculate accumulated depreciation in vehicles, right, which is um, number one here. Right, so it's this minus this. 814 minus 519, 200. That's uh, 814 minus five nineteen two hundred so that will be eight hundred and fourteen thousand 
minus 519,200, that's 294, 800. Then calculate depression on equipment for, for the year. Right, uh, so the depression on equipment for the year, basically uh, we need to calculate it separately. Right, uh, it's kind of like a little bit straightforward. So uh, you calculate this separately and this separately. So it's 561,000. And remember the depreciation is being calculated at 10% um, per annum on cost. So if you say 561, Five sixty one thousand times ten percent to get uh, fifty six thousand one hundred. Right. So if you look at this, right, if you come to your question here, right, uh, the carrying value is fifty thousand, you cannot depreciate. Uh, an asset, a fixed asset in the books to negative, right? And again, uh, the rule or international accounting standards, basically they say if an asset is fully depreciated, uh, it will be left in the books at one rand, right? So you, you cannot depreciate an asset to negative. You can depreciate until uh, the residual value or the, the value that is remaining is one rand in your books. So uh, what we need, we need to adjust our depreciation, we cannot record the depreciation at what? At 56,000. So our depreciation then will be 50,000. Right, that's the maximum we can get. Right, minus one rand, which will be 49,999. Right, that will be our depreciation. So we do away with this depreciation here because you cannot depreciate to negative and the asset has to be left at one rand if it's fully depreciated. So you can only depreciate 49,999 to make sure we leave the asset at what? At one rand. Then uh, the new asset will be 55,000 times 10%. I tire was bought on 31 December. That means it is six months. It was six months in use post 31 December. That was the end of the month. So January to June, that's six months. So that will be times six over 12. Uh, this will give you 5,500 times half will be 2,750 so 49,999 plus 2,750 that will give you 52,749 I then uh, we will go working on disposal of uh, disposal of carrying value Disposal at carrying value, right? If you look at this question again, right, uh, the asset or the vehicles at the beginning, they were 814. Then at the end, they were 649. So there was no additional purchases, right? So if uh, that's the case, right, the cost price of the vehicle, right, uh, will be 814. thousand minus six hundred and forty nine thousand right so eight hundred and fourteen minus six hundred and forty nine that's uh one thirty five so uh that's the value that comes here yeah, that will be hundred and thirty five thousand Right, so for 135,000, 
that's that's the vehicle right that's the cost price of vehicle that was sold right if you come to our question i to calculating the disposal at carrying value on vehicles right so uh what you need to do is 135,000 minus 66,000 all this multiplied by uh, 20 percent right times we're calculating current year depreciation after date of sale right uh, this vehicle basically was sold on that one March that basically it was sold three months before the year and that means it was in use for nine months right so times nine over what 12 right uh, so 135,000 minus 66,000 right uh, times 20% times 9 divided by 12 that will be 10,315 I'm using the correct term um, 20% 66 Let's double check before I move further My time um, 814 Now this is 165 Right, that's 165 so here yeah, it will be 165 not 135 right so um 165,000 minus 66,000 right times 20 percent times 9 divided by 12 that's 14,850 and just calculate again just to be sure 165,000 minus 66,000 uh, times 20 percent times 9 divided by 12 yeah 14,850 right so that 14,850 right if you are to calculate now the carrying value right a date of sale that will be um 165,000 Minus sixty six thousand minus fourteen thousand eight hundred and fifteen. So that will give you one sixty five thousand minus sixty six thousand minus fourteen eight fifteen eight four thousand one hundred and fifteen. And that will be the carrying value at the top sale. What about the selling price? They didn't ask about in the question, right? So the selling price will be. Let me use that difference so that you know it's not part of the question. Right, selling price. Remember, it was sold at 3350 profit. So selling price will be. Um, 84,150 plus the profit on sale of 3,350 just so you know so this will be your selling price right if you are to meet a question that ask about that 
Right, then the next question is uh, retained income note. Right, uh, on the retained income note, we basically using uh, this part of the question. Right, this one. And uh, the net, the income tax. Right, so uh, let's first use this one. So they say, because um, you're not given the closing balance, you're not given the opening balance, neither are you given the uh, profit for the year, but we are told that uh, 309,000 was tax at 30%. So uh, if, if you're given tax at 30% and the follow-up tax for the net profit was 309,000, you can easily calculate the what? Um, the net profit. That is after tax. Remember what comes to retain income's net profit after tax. Then profit for the year. That is equal to 70 over 30 multiplied by 309. 70 is the value that you want to get so the value that you want to get will be always at the top because with 30 percent which is 309 then you want the 70 percent so the 70 percent 70 is basically we're looking at the total amount of net profit before tax was deducted is 100 percent but we have the 30 percent which is 309 so we want the 70 of the 100 and we have the already have the 30 of the 100 percent so 70 plus 30 will give you 100 so 70 is on top so 309 so 70 divided by 30 times 309,000 right this will give you 721,000 right okay then we have uh, repurchases right uh, here there were shares that were repurchased right and how many shares were repurchased right if we are to calculate right because uh, the average price is 135 right and the value of shares uh, ordinary share capital at the end right remember this is um, it's uh, 1,755,000 that's the value monetary value these, these are not shares that's the monetary value so to get uh, the number of shares at the end basically if you come here to me i get the value of number of shares at the end what you basically do is it's 1,755,000 divided by what 1.35 right because that's the average price. That's what we're told. That's the average price. So that will give us a correct uh, amount. So 1,755,000 divided by 1.35. Right, uh, that's 1,300,000 shares. So the closing number of shares is 1,300,000. The opening is 1,000,000. 500 so that means 200,000 shares repurchased so that 200,000 shares that were repurchased right and they were purchased at a, at a premium right um, 150 instead of 135 so you need to account for that in here so repurchased shares that's 200,000 times 0 0.15 the 0 0.15 basically it's uh, 150 minus 135 and that will give you 15 cents so 200,000 times 0 0.15 that will give you 30,000 
and that's a deduction. Then uh, interim dividends. Uh, interim dividends are uh, we are given one million five hundred times zero point one two. This is one million five hundred times point one two. That's hundred eighty thousand. Right. Um, you can calculate the. Um, final dividend here, but you are given anyway, is 260,000, right, uh, which is here. And this is our final dividend, showed us what dividend. Okay, um, then to calculate your opening or retained income, we just reverse everything, so that will be a closing. Retained income one million and forty five uh, plus four hundred and forty thousand plus thirty thousand minus seven hundred and twenty one thousand. That's seven ninety four. I was working reverse right there, just reversed. What you initially remember normally you subtract all those seven that is subtracted it back to get to the opening uh, balance right uh, the next thing let's look at the balance sheet right uh, because there are a lot of things that we don't have for for the balance sheet and we can't calculate the because here we'll have uh, the tangible assets But you can call it because you don't know the value of uh, land or property that is being uh, held at current assets as well. Remember, we don't have uh, cash and cash equivalents here. And that is the bank. And we are not given the value of the bank. And, but inventory we can we have. Calculated inventory earlier, eight hundred ninety-eight I tie then for trade and other receivables. Uh, we have um, trade data two hundred nine thousand one hundred. Right. We have some additions. Right. Uh, then we have. Um, Uh, then we have a uh, deposit on water and electricity of 11,000. So that will be plus 11,000. Right, then we have um, this amount, right? Tax normally, prepayments for tax. Right, it was 359, but the tax calculated is 309,000. So they paid more on tax. So uh, they paid more by 50,000. So if you pay more, it becomes a tax asset, right? If you make more provisional than the actual tax that was calculated, it becomes a tax asset. But if you pay less than the actual, there will be tax liability to be part of the current liabilities. So that will be plus 50,000. Then uh, plus... We have this amount here. Where is it? Um, right. Um, hope I still remember. Right. Um, a creditor's credit balance. Right. 
of 1,500 in the creditors ledger must still be transferred to his account in the debtors ledger. Right, so there's a credit balance right on a creditor. Right, so basically they are offsetting um, accounts. Right, they are offsetting what we call a creditor. That means basically it's you have the person is a credit at the same time they have a data so they owe you more so you're offsetting their credit uh with uh, what they owe you right so that's a credit balance in the creditors ledger that needs to be uh, offset so there's a credit balance so you're basically transferring a creditor's account into your debt into your data account it's the same uh client that means it's the same credit and the same uh, data right so they you owe them but they owe you so they owe you more than what you owe them so just offset what you owe them with uh, what they owe you right so we'll edit here then plus 1500 right um then we have uh, another adjustment that we'll work on now um director's fees as I said, the company has three directors who earn the same fee. One director was paid two months in advance. So, uh, in essence, these directors are paid for 12 months, each of them. So, that will be three times 12, which is equal to 36, plus the two extra ones. Right. So, that means a monthly fee, right? The monthly fee will be uh, the total amount that was paid to directors is um, 1,824,000. So the monthly fee will be 1,824,000 divided by 38. Uh, this is equal to 1,824,000 divided by 38, that's 48,000. So the total that is owed, that it was prepaid, right, uh, that was paid in advance will be, 90, will be this times 2, which is 96,000. So that's an asset that's plus 96,000. Then that will be everything that goes in there. Right, we'll calculate it. Then we go down to mortgage loan. Right, uh, the loan uh, statement that we have here, right, we have uh, the loan, but we don't have the balance at the end. But our books, the books of Tsatsi, shows that uh, according to them to the payment that they were making they are left with a loan of what 609 but they haven't added the interest capitalized so to get a 609 to get the loan at the end what you basically need is to add the what uh, the interest capitalized All right so that will be 609 840 plus 83 160 609 840 plus 83 160 that will give us 693,000. Right, but they say 20% of this loan right, uh, will be paid during the year that becomes short term loan. So 603, 693 times 20%, uh, 138 times 20%, that will get uh, 138. 600 so that will be a short-term loan 
so for the loan we have 693,000 minus 138,600 um, minus 693,000 that's five five four four hundred and immediately you push this one here short term loan uh one thirty eight six hundred right uh, then showed us for dividends Two hundred sixty thousand. Right. So this is uh, this amount. Actually, we calculated it here. Right. This one here. Right. Okay. Then um, trade under the payables. Yeah, yeah. I trade under the tables. Yeah, I, okay, trade under the tables. Um, we have uh, trade creditors. Uh, which is um. Seven hundred sixty three thousand eight hundred sixty. <coughs> right, uh, plus do we owe anything? Mm, not anything that is here. Let's look at rent expense. Right, so for rent expense, the storeroom was rented out right, from 1 October. So from October until March, right, that's October, November, December, January, February, March, that's six months. So 11,200 times six. Uh, that will give you 67,200 right then from as from 1 April that's April May June right the rent will be 11,200 times 1.075 times 3 right so eleven two hundred times one point zero seven five then times three that's thirty six thousand hundred twenty. So total rent that should have been paid, right? It's um sixty seven thousand two hundred plus thirty six thousand one twenty plus sixty seven two hundred. So this should have been one hundred three thousand three hundred twenty. But they only paid ninety um, 
Right, minus 91 to 8. So they owe 12,041 months rent. So plus 12,040. Right, then once we've got this one, we can complete our balance sheet. So that's uh, 763. Let me just double check if I didn't leave anything out. Do it with that. Okay, I left this one here. Right. I left this one. Right. Uh, that's minus 1,500, the transfer of the credit balance, right? Then that will be fine. That's 763, H60, uh, plus 12,040, minus 1,500. That's uh, 774,400. Right, then that will give us current liabilities of uh, plus 260,000 plus 138,600. That's uh, 1,173,000. 1,173,000. Then, um, And current liabilities that's five five four one hundred. We don't need to write it anyway, it's still fine because there's only one figure in there. Actually, I uh, here it's not supposed to be a plus, it's a minus. Here, yeah. apologies for that. It's minus so. Minus one five hundred minus one five hundred. So that will be three hundred and sixty four thousand six hundred. Right then uh, now your cash and cash equivalents that will be a hundred one million four hundred and seven six hundred. Minus eight nine eight eight hundred minus three sixty four six hundred that's one foot four thousand two hundred then your current non current uh, assets total of non current assets there will be total assets four million five hundred twenty seven one hundred minus one million minus current assets one million four hundred and seven six hundred which gives you three hundred and nineteen three million one hundred and nineteen eight hundred then your tangible assets will be three million one hundred nineteen eight hundred minus five hundred and eighty two thousand <coughs> minus five hundred and eighty two thousand which is your fixed deposit five hundred and eighty two thousand so that will be two million Five hundred thirty-seven thousand eight hundred. So that will be your your balance sheet. That's that's how simple it is. If you make any calculations wrong, might 
you know what to do but you calculate it always make an effort especially for something you are going to try and say figure is it is like this one just transfer whatever figure you calculated earlier uh, to here it will be fine right but if you find another figure different figure you always get everything uh, completely wrong so i think the catch of this question mostly it was um on here right uh, on this part here right on this part uh the one point if you didn't know what the current ratio is it will confuse you and as well as uh, the income tax uh, thing that was put inside so uh, that was question one uh, i would do question two next right so look out for the video uh, for question uh, two and i hope um, you'll find uh, this a uh, bit helpful uh, please uh, make sure you do uh, subscribe uh, to the channel when you get time then please share the video if you know someone who can be really assisted by this video